And there's also an, uh, another individual who came in our history. Uh, his name was Doran. Right. Uh, let's right. talk about him for a minute and, and, and the effect he's had on, on faith and reason. Well, Darwin, um, as uh, Cardinal Christoph Schoenborn said recently in a, in a series of lectures, is one of the greatest scientists in the history of the world. His ability to see the way in which life develops and how all of life is connected to it, to uh, all, all forms of life are connected to each other on this vast tree of existence, mm -hmm. to show that the interaction of creatures with their environment is what precisely makes all of the diversity of species we see today, mm -hmm. um, is one of the great insights in scientific history. Mm -hmm. It's in the top five, without a doubt, and it may be the very best of all of them. Darwin deserves greats like Newton, Galileo, and Einstein right. because, of, because of that. In fact, he, he, in the, he represents um, in biology, uh, uh, he's certainly, without a doubt, the greatest pioneer. So uh, at the same time, um, Darwin's insights into the natural causes of all of the various living species posed at least a seeming obstacle to some uh, in terms of their belief in God. Mm -hmm. Um, when there was no explanation for how all of the various species developed, it was easy to simply say, well, there are cats, because sometime a long time ago, God miraculously created the first group of cats, and mm. then these are all their offspring, right? But now we had a way of accounting for all of the various and wonderful diversity that we see mm -hmm. in the universe. So Darwin's way of thinking then raised the question, well, what role did God have? What did God do? Uh, if, in fact, we have a natural explanation, does that mean that God is out of the picture? Mm -hmm. And so, really, all of, the, all of the controversy and hostility that arises between some believers, some members of the scientific community, and, that, of course, we hear about it a lot on our, in, in the media, right. uh, in the secular media, um, that comes really from, I think, some of those questions that for many people remain unanswered, mm -hmm. but are not without answers. And so, uh, was, now was Darwin, was he an atheist? Um, or? Darwin, no. He was, uh, he was kind of a tortured believer, an Anglican, um, an Englishman and an Anglican, and uh, he kind of varied back and forth in his own life. Mm -hmm. um, uh, really, the, I think Darwin's biggest difficulties were not theological, but primarily philosophical. Mm -hmm. He didn't have a good grasp of some of the philosophical underpinnings of Christian belief. And right. because of that, some of his own discoveries even, even left him conflicted and confused. Mm -hmm. um, so anyway, yeah. And so now we have, the, uh, we have these neo-Darwin thinkers, mm -hmm. Darwinian thinkers who, who are atheists, um, and, mm -hmm. and who do try to, you know, uh, knock down faith or whatever. Right. Why, why are they doing this if, if Darwin wasn't necessarily, if that was never his intention necessarily, was right. to destroy faith? Well, um, they feel that evolution makes atheism more credible mm -hmm. than belief. Mm -hmm. And they think that, I think, precisely because, like Darwin himself, they don't have a good grasp of God's relationship to the universe. Mm -hmm. We as Catholics, though, I think have some insights that could help them. For instance, Darwin revealed that in the development of all living creatures and even human beings according to our bodies, mm -hmm. that you have the causality of various other creatures, the mm -hmm. environment, um, the other living organisms that they share this world with, et cetera, uh, natural forces like sunlight and so on, water, oxygen, all of those things. Uh, that those things really bring about some of the amazing diversity that we see, the beautiful colors, the incredible skills of certain animals, etc. That shows that God loves to share His goodness and power through secondary causes. All right. God is ultimately the creator of all of the things that we see, mm -hmm. but He doesn't create them by pushing creation buttons. Mm -hmm. That God loves to bring about things by not simply making creatures to exist, but making those creatures to be the causes of other creatures, mm -hmm. right? Now, that's very obvious in ordinary things that we can experience, like the fact that my three children were caused by my wife and I, mm -hmm. right? But let's go beyond that for a second and, and look at our own faith. 
Catholics don't have a problem believing that God likes to use secondary causes mm -hmm. because in our faith we see that God even loves to save us through secondary causes. Mm -hmm. God's saving grace comes into the world through a creature, mm -hmm. Mary, of, Mary of Galilee. Right? Right. In other words, the Blessed Virgin Mary is the mediator of all of the graces that we experience. Right. She is the one who said yes to God, and by her yes, her creaturely yes, with the assistance of God's grace, the Son of God comes into the world. Right. Now, if God can save us all through a creature, He can certainly create us all through creatures. Definitely. 